Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this tutorial video on loops. Probably one of the most visually impressive kayaking moves, and one that requires good core control, balance and timing. If you can master the front loop on flat water, you open up a world of kayaking possibility. Whilst it is possible to learn the loop in a pogo flip style using a pontoon or similar launch point, you will gain most from this skill and be able to apply it more universally if you already have a solid bow stall. So, how do you go about doing a front flip in a kayak? Well, there are two main methods. The first and easiest being more akin to the sort of loop performed in a shallow hole, and the second being the big air version. In this tutorial, we'll look at both, because while the second is more visually impressive, the first starts to become really useful when you get onto doing combo moves or harder moves like the Flatwater McNasty and Phonics Monkey. Both methods begin in the same way, from a bow stall. You then want to get the boat bouncing. Lots of tutorials on this recommend slicing the paddle deep into the water and then forcefully pulling the blades up to push the bow deeper. This definitely works, but as you can see in these approaches, I opt for a different technique. A technique that applies less load to the kayaker's vulnerable shoulders, uses more core muscle to generate power, and allows the paddle to stay on the surface offering support. To do this, initiate a small downwards pull on both blades while they're still quite shallow. The arms remain fairly neutral while the core leans forward. Tuck the elbows up to keep those blades shallow, then slice them out forwards for stability as the bow starts to be rejected. Straighten the arms again and close the core down towards the knees. The entire motion should look something like a reverse row. Repeat as many times as you like until you're achieving the amount of pop that you want. This is where the two methods diverge. While for the big air version you might want to carry on bouncing three or four or perhaps even more times to gain rejection and height. For the shallow loop variant, one or two bounces is usually enough. And it is precisely this increased control that arguably makes this the easier version to learn first. With the boat now bouncing, tuck your elbows up exactly as you have been for that bounce motion. As the boat reaches its lowest point and then begins to be rejected, you want to get into a standing position. In other words, push down through your heels, open up your core and look up and forwards. Just like with the cartwheel, picking an upstream mark to focus on could be handy. The bow will now rapidly be rejected from the water, and as it does so, you need to tuck forwards aggressively. The tighter you tuck, the faster you will rotate. This tuck definitely takes some getting used to, as it seems like literally headbutting the water. But your aim here should be to get your head, back and paddle blades to all be lying as close to the surface as possible. When tucking up, I find it helpful to imagine that I'm looking for the fresh air behind my boat. Of course, that does require the bravery test of keeping my eyes open. Now your upper body is lying flat on the surface, and the boat should have snappily rotated over the top of you. But it isn't time to relax just yet. To finish the move, open out the core again and push down through your heels, much like the standing up motion you did to start with. From here, you can sit up to neutral again, perhaps planting one or other blade for stability. 
For the big air version, most elements remain the same, but the major difference occurs at the point you first stand up. Unlike the shallow version, where the paddle stayed on the water's surface, to achieve more air, you want to reach the paddle up overhead as far as you dare. Picking an upstream mark that is up above water level, a bridge for instance, will really help exaggerate this. You also want to keep your core and knees engaged and push hard through the heels to maintain control over the boat. From here, the next sequence of moves, tuck and finish, happen very swiftly. As before, pause a moment to allow the boat to be rejected up and forwards, then tuck aggressively. The extra height generated here should make looking for that fresh air behind the boat way easier. Even as your back touches down on the water's surface, you want to already be kicking out the heels and opening your core out again. Finish the move exactly as before, returning the core to neutral, perhaps stabilising with one blade. Some pointers. Firstly, timing is everything with the loop, and particularly with that tuck action. Tucking too soon will kill all of the explosive rejection, while standing up for too long can cause all manner of issues. Essentially, you want to pause just long enough to ensure the bow is being rejected up and forwards. Secondly, when finishing the move, especially after the big air version, don't be surprised to find your paddle over or even slightly behind your head. Obviously, you need to get out of that unstable back deck position, but you also want to protect your shoulders. The best solution is to slice one blade out and bring it overhead to a comfortable position in front of you, whilst using a ruddery draw stroke on the other side for support. Thirdly, in modern playboats, where there's a lot of volume to be rejected, kicking out the heels to finish the move may not seem totally necessary. Especially in a hole, you might get away with not doing so. But you only have to watch an old school boat loop to see the importance. Without kicking the heels, the loop in an old school boat becomes a total mess, and all that extra length on the stern has to be fought to maintain control. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you've been following any of my content and enjoying it, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe. It makes a big difference to me and it means that more people get to see and benefit from this content. And as always, leave a comment down below of something that you want to see a tutorial on or something that you'd like to see a video made about. Thanks very much. I'm gonna go hit this.